In this video, we'll talk about how transparent palettes can make your designs more vivid and your life easier at the same time. And we'll also take a look at this online tool to help us create transparent palettes within seconds based on the colors we already have. Hey, it's Adam and welcome back to the fun of iterating with Figma. On this channel you can typically find short videos in which I share some of my personal favorite ways of working with the tool, except for this bonus episode which will be a bit different. Not so much about Figma, more on style guides, color systems, color palettes in general. And specifically, if any of these terms ring a bell, then I am sure you have already seen or created a palette of grays, or as I prefer to call them personally, neutrals. Now, just to make sure we are all on the same page, these colors are typically used in UI elements such as typography, icons, backgrounds, borders, shadows, and so on. And they play a vital role in setting the tone of your app. For example, a very popular choice nowadays is going for neutral colors with this bluish tint, because not only does it make your app easier on the eyes, but it also gives it that professional look and feel. Now, warmer hues of neutrals, on the other hand, can be seen more often in apps associated with health or nature or just things along those lines. But boy oh boy, the fun really doesn't need to stop there because you can also use neutral colors to amplify and complement the accent color of your app. And this opens up a world of possibilities, such as using hues from the spectrum of green, violet, red, and so on. At some point though, you will inevitably need to use a translucent color. And a simple example would be that particular witty kind of a button that shape becomes visible only upon hovering. And because buttons are, well, usually placed on all sorts of backgrounds, I'm sure we can all agree, a transparent color needs to be used in this case to make sure that this hover state is always visible, right? And the same goes to elements such as backdrops behind models, dividers or shadows. So the question is, which color do we use then? And what I have seen most designers doing is taking either a black or white color and simply reducing its opacity. Some would try using one of the darker shades from their neutral palette, but the problem still remains, and that is, if we think about it, we are losing tons of color in our app this way. Not to mention it all feels very random. And why would we spend countless hours on perfecting and fine-tuning our neutral color palette if it's all going to waste the moment we are faced with transparency, right? It just makes no sense and there's got to be a better way. And well, there is, I believe, and it's simple, at least in theory. So for each color in your neutral palette, just create its transparent version that has the lowest opacity level while still looking the same when placed against the same background. And because it was supposed to be simple, let's just go over it again one step at a time. Let's do it together. So we start off with a color from our neutral palette. We decrease its opacity to the lowest possible level while finding a new color value, which in combination will end up looking the same as the color we have started with. Of course, as long as they are both placed on the same background. And once we are done with that, then we just repeat this process for all colors in our palette. And the end result is that we end up with a brand new set of supportive colors in our toolbox that will not only take all the hassle of, of creating new colors on this part away, but will also help us regain some of that lost saturation. So, for example, that button that we looked a second ago. Notice how it is no longer desaturated and flat. Instead, it is now vivid and bright, and it still maintains its clarity against multiple backgrounds or shadows no longer dual and monochromatic, they follow the color temperature found in our neutral palette seamlessly. And dividers, for example, right? No longer distracting, they just simply blend into their surroundings. These are all nuances which are hardly visible when looked at in isolation, I'm sure we can all agree. But when combined together, the difference can be tremendous and this is truly something that we can feel. Okay, great, but how do we find those transparent colors? Do we guess them? Well, I suppose we could try that, but there is a better way, because it turns out we can actually do the math ourselves. And if that still doesn't sound like fun to you, then don't worry. There are many great online apps for creating color palettes, such as Colorbox.io, Palette.up, or my personal favorite, the Leonardo. None of them had this kind of functionality, though, 
So I set out on a challenge to learn the basics of JavaScript, and so now I can proudly say introducing Alfredo, the transparent colors generator. Alright, let's jump right into it to see how it works. Right after saying hi to Alfredo, the first thing we can see is this demo palette that's already loaded in. It's right there in the center of the app. On the left, we can see original hex values for each of the colors in the palette. While on the right, we can see the already generated transparent versions of the color using white in this particular example as a base. And it's worth pointing out that the output color is presented in this HSLA format, which for those of you who don't know is just another way of expressing a color. And while this might not be obvious from the start, which is also kind of the point, once we start changing the background color of the viewport preview right over here, we will discover that each color row has two colors in it, one of which is indeed transparent. Now, Let's go ahead and try it out with our own palette. So, to delete colors, we can either erase them from an input field and hit enter like so, or to get rid of them all at once, we can just click on this erase button on the left hand side. Cool, now to add colors, we can again either do it one by one by pasting our hex value over here, or if we happen to have them all combined in a comma separated list, we can import them here in this dialog. Alright, hopefully that was simple, because believe it or not, that's pretty much it. Alredo has already generated transparent colors for us, and he did it on the spot. So yeah, just paste your colors, and that's it. Now to get our colors back to a design tool or a code editor, we can simply copy each one of them separately by clicking on this HSLA value. And then, for example, we can go into Figma, then paste the color definition, and then retype it in a color picker, just like this. And on that note, I should probably mention that releasing a Figma plugin for that is what I plan on doing next. Good. Alternatively, going back to Alfredo, we can grab all color values at once by copying them from the export dialog, where we can, by the way, choose between HSLA or hex values. Now, Alfredo comes with a few options, and the most important one is listed over here at the very top. This is where we can specify which background to generate transparent colors for, so that they look the same as their original counterparts. Simply put, if you are designing for light mode and the main surface color of your app is white, then I don't think you really need to change anything. But if it's a dark theme, then you should most definitely switch this to black. This way, all colors are generated to achieve the same look when placed against the same black background. And you can actually see this by looking more closely at this value right here. This is the alpha channel, so the opacity. Notice how it changes when I'm switching through black and white backgrounds. The color at the very bottom, the one that used to be the least translucent, now has a very high opacity value. And lastly, for very specific needs, you can actually pick your own background color under this custom option, so you can totally have a lot of fun with this. Alright, now I can imagine that some of you have paused the video at this point and you just resume it. So for those of you, hello, welcome back, I know why you are here, let's talk about it. And for everyone else, let me explain. Having a transparent color palette generator like this, you might be tempted to just go ahead and use it everywhere in your designs right now. Which means you will soon reach a point where, for example, replacing a previously desaturated transparent color with a new one from that new freshly generated palette of ours will produce, well, not so pleasing outcome, to put it nicely. And it turns out that this losing saturation situation was not entirely a bad thing. And what I discovered through my experimentation is that, in practice, you would want to preserve as much saturation as possible in the lightest shades of your neutral palette, and then slowly reduce it step by step as your colors get darker. And this is what Alfredo can help you with, so that you can achieve it in a way that can be later easily reproduced. So to change the saturation of your generated palette, first we'll need to switch to this custom option. And right away we can notice that something has changed in the look of our palette on the left. And that's indeed the darkest colors at the top, that if you look closely at this number, which stands for the saturation level, have become, well, almost colorless. 
and to understand this a little bit better we can actually look at this chart at the very bottom and hopefully you can see that each dot on the chart represents one color in our palette on the left hand side and that the y axis shows us how saturated each of them are and knowing this we can tell that going towards the lightest shades of our palette right now the saturation is being slowly increased if we want to change how saturation is distributed across shades of our palette, we can experiment with different gradation presets, which can be found over here. For example, by picking one of those Is In Out options, what we'll achieve is that the first few colors will be of a very low saturation level, then there will be this sudden increase in the middle, and then in the end, the lightest colors will be again on a very similarly high saturation levels. If we don't want our darkest colors to become completely desaturated, we can play with the adjustment intensity slider over here. And finally, the offset slider will let us control, for example, the lightest colors if we want them to remain fully saturated for a bit longer. So just go ahead and have fun with these settings now. Try them out and experiment until you are satisfied with the end result. And when that happens, the best part of Alfredo is that if we go into this export dialog again and set the export type to JSON, we get a piece of code that we can copy and save in our documentation. And this way if in, let's say, a year from now, we find ourselves needing to change the core neutral palette, and therefore we need to, of course, regenerate transparent colors with the same settings, we can easily do so by importing the JSON in this dialog. So that would be it. I really hope you will find this knowledge and Alfredo useful. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments, or just feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. Now, when it comes to the other plan episodes, I know it has been a while since I published the last one from that list, but I want to assure you that the Figma Markdown episode is very much coming soon, so stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, thanks for watching, take care and happy iterating.